What's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids. Thanks as always for checking out our videos. Today we're going to be looking at this, which is my bushcraft bag. And uh, this is the bag I have a bunch of gear in that I, I will, you know, throw over my shoulder, throw into my car, drive out into the woods. And then uh, this is the, the uh, these are the items I use if I want to get out there and just work on skills. So this is not a bug out bag, a survival bag, an overnight bag. So basically, you know, if I'm going to go out for a day and I want to have some core uh, items, materials, so I can work on different skills, this is what I'll bring. So we're going to zoom in here. We'll talk about the bag, and then we'll talk about the items in the bag, and then we'll offer you a chance in the uh, comments down below to give us your thoughts and your feedback. For the bag, what we have in front of you here is a Polish bread bag, believe it or not. And I got this at an Army surplus store. It's called Army Barracks. They have them in uh, Massachusetts and New Hampshire and up in Maine. Got this one up in Maine. I think it was like 11 bucks. And I just thought, hey, I want to get kind of an old school um, bushcraft bag. And so I thought this one was cool. It had a, a, a just kind of a nice look and then a bunch of little pockets inside. Uh, does have a strap, so you can throw that over your shoulder. I'll show you on the back real quick. It also does have a uh, handle, so you can carry it that way. It took me a while to figure out how to actually close it, but it's kind of cool. So you've got this loop here, and then you've got two, one here, and a second loop there. What you do is you run this over like so, run this underneath, and then put it in through that second loop, and you do the same thing on this side. So run this over like this. See if I can do it. Yep. Yeah. Run this through. And then into the second one. Um, on the outside, there's not really anything too fancy. Show you what the back look like. So you have some, you do have some straps here on the bottom if you want to attach something else. To open it up, you basically lift these two up. And then on this front section, you've got two small pockets. And you could probably fit, it looks like about probably two big lighters side by side. If you turn them, you know, like this, you could probably fit one, two, three, four, maybe five. And then there's some space down at the uh, bottom there. Do have another strap to kind of compress it and keep it a little bit more organized. Looking into the inside here, you've got a pocket that's about a third of the total size of the inside, and then this area over here is about two thirds. Um, you do have one, two little pockets here, and then one on the side, and then over on this side, you have another pocket as well. And I'll just show you real quick. So this is my arm. You can see how far it goes down in. So we're talking about, you know, probably about a foot uh, down in, 12 inches or so, down in on this side. One of the things I have liked about it is when you get it filled, it does kind of square off nicely, so this side extends and it will sit kind of flat like this without having to worry about, you know, kind of crumpling in on itself. So despite the fact that it's very lightweight, it's not going to, uh, not going to kind of tumble or fall apart on you, it doesn't look like. And uh, even the stitching, it's actually pretty cool. There's a lot of double stitching in these different spots, which is nice, you know, um, sometimes you get something that's looks decent or the overall quality is pretty good but then you look at the stitching and a single stitch and a little bit of wear and tear on that and the whole thing's going to pop apart. The other thing I like about this is that I spent 11 bucks on it so if it ends up not being great I'm not out 50 bucks, 100 bucks for some fancy bag. Opening the bag up, I've got these two little pockets here in front. The first thing that you'll see is one of the CRKT Foltz Minimalists and this is uh, the Warncliffe design, this is actually something from Chopfest 2014 that um, uh, CRKT put on. Great little knife, very compact, you know, so if you want to do some real fine work, you could certainly use this. And I have it in its uh, sheath, and then with this uh, setup with paracord so I can run it around my neck. So let's take it out into the woods, you know, let's say I use it a little bit, I don't have to put it back in the bag, I can put it in the sheath and then run it around my neck, and now I've got this with me. Great little knife. If you haven't checked these out, they're very inexpensive. I actually have, um, I don't have the Tonto, but I also have the Bowie version, which would also be good for, you know, kind of a tiny little neck knife for out in the, uh, out in the woods. So that's one of the first things you'll see. And then the other thing I have is a lighter. Now, when you see this, you might think, well, if you're working on bushcraft skills, you probably want to, you know, do a bow drill, hand drill, things like that. True. But if you're out in the woods and you're working on, say, you know, making a, a trap, and it's cold out and you don't want to spend time making a bow drill to make a fire and then work on making your trap and I got a lighter and I can just get right to actually working on uh, working on the other thing I want to focus on and not on the, uh, the fire making. The other thing I will note is that even if you're good with a lighter, a ferro rod, um, waterproof matches, things like that, it's always good to continue to work on those skills. You know, if you've done it in the dry, now do it in the rain, do it in the snow, do it in the sleet, do it in different types of weather. To, uh, to see that you can still make a fire with something as, um, as helpful as a lighter. And then, you know, for me, I like cattail. I like birch bark when it comes to a ferro rod. Uh, try doing it with a lighter, but not using those materials. Find another sort of tinder 
and uh, maybe that'll teach you, you know, some additional skills even when it comes to fire making using a, a lighter. So that's pretty much it here on the outside. When we get into the bag, the first thing I'll show you is I have some bug spray. And again, you could cover yourself in mud. There's all kinds of, you know, you can use smoke from a fire. There's different natural ways you can keep the bugs away. But this is the easiest and fastest way. Again, if I want to work on X skill and don't want to deal with the bugs, I can just put this on and I'm good to go. And in New Hampshire, Maine, you know, Vermont, New England in general in the summer, the bugs can be really, really rough. So I've got to make sure I have that with me. I've got this water bottle. This is from Stanley. And this section separates. So this is... And it's not insulated and that's a, uh, a metal container and then you can put this on and then untwist this and now it's a water bottle so you know I fill this up before I go out and now I've got water with me if I want to cook something make tea make something else I can use that to do so I'm not you know doing any kind of major cooking when I'm out there for an afternoon or whatever we're doing some bushcraft skills so that's why um, I have this one I like the clean canteen as well but I do like the fact that when you take this plastic off you have that wide section to uh, to put things into this is also good for collecting and storing things if you're out uh, working on some skills this is available, I think, only at Walmart. I haven't been able to find it any other place, and even at a lot of Walmarts, they don't have it. But uh, check around your area, because uh, a lot of people have liked this, they've asked about it. So I would recommend that one. I've used it quite a bit. Also in this section, I do have a pen and a Sharpie, and I've got a little notepad in here I'll show you in a minute. But if I you know, remember something or learn something, I want to write it down, and then Sharpie, just in case the pen dies, uh, Sharpies tend to, to hold up better just long term. So I've got that with me got my Baco Laplander saw, which I've done a review on. These are very popular in the bushcraft, wilderness survival world. Uh, great great uh, saw, very compact, durable, not super expensive. I do like my Corona saw. I like my Wicked wicked Tree Gear saw as well. But this is the one I've chose to go, chose to go, go with for now. Um, great saw overall. And again, very small and lightweight. As far as books... Kind of the main book for me that got me into wilderness survival was this, Tom Brown's Field Guide to Wilderness Survival. Uh, this is what I cut my teeth on getting into the world of wilderness survival. I read this when I was in high school and going into college and then just kind of started to work on learning these skills. That's how I actually learned these skills and eventually got to teach um, uh, some wilderness survival classes because of just basically spending a lot of time in the woods, dirt time as they call it, and learning all these skills. It's really beat up, but it's a good overview of a lot of different things connected to wilderness survival. Uh, Dave Canterbury's new Bushcraft um, book is another one that you may want to check out. There's a lot of good books out there, but those two in particular I think would be worthwhile resources. I do have an emergency astronaut blanket just in case I get really cold while I'm out there. I could wrap myself up and warm up. Or if I'm working in an area and they got a fire going, I could, you know, set this up like this, you know, open it up and set it up at an angle like this so I can reflect the heat back to myself while I'm working on some skills. Uh, over on this side, let's see, here's my... My little notebook to take notes, as I mentioned earlier. I do have a Shemag scarf. This is good for collecting things or filtering some water. This is always also really good. I find in the winter for me, as long as I keep my neck warm, uh, my whole body stays warmer. So I tend to have this on and you know wrapped around my, my neck in the uh, in the cooler weather. Lots of different uses for these. There's actually some good videos out there on YouTube about different ways you can use one of the Shemag scarves. Uh, instant guide to edible plants, instant guide to medicinal plants. Let me get the lighting a little bit better so you can see. Yeah, there we go. Maybe this one's a little bit light just because the uh, blue. Anyhow, um, my other favorite book is the North American Wildlife book put out by the Reader's Digest folks, and uh, that's a really good one. It's just really big and heavy, but these are these are good. Again, if you're going to do anything medicinal or edible, know what you're doing, know to identify. Probably get trained by somebody else. Not probably, definitely get trained by somebody else. The thing I like about these books the most is that even if you're not going to eat the plants, they've got lots of good pictures to be able to identify the plants and then key features described. And uh, the, the quality of the pictures is a huge deal when it comes to plant identification. So that's why I really like like these um, these books in particular. So we got that. I have a pair of mechanics gloves in tan. Just if I'm doing anything that's going to be you know aggressive using my hands, I can wear these and, and not get my hands all beat up by the end of the day. Little side pocket over here. I do keep some potable agua. Uh, if I don't want to boil water, uh, boil water in this, you know, I can just pop one of these tabs in, and then not too long, I've got drinkable water. So that's good. I think that's it from that side. In this big section, my knife is the Benchmade Bushcrafter, and I've been using this knife a lot. I like this knife. Just overall, just lots of nice uh, 
features of the 90 degree spine, the way the handle feels, I like the look of it. They did come out with the uh, similar version, exact same version of this except with a tan handle, which if you didn't watch my video from uh, SHOT Show, uh, this is new news to you, but they actually built it uh, with a tan handle for EOD guys uh, in the military because they liked this knife uh, while cutting C4, but they didn't like the handle, this handle color, so they gave them a, a, a tan handle, which is pretty cool. And then I've got a ferro rod in this little ferro rod holder here. So and that has some uh, the uh, ferro rod and the magnesium on the bottom. So that's another thing to work on fire skills. And that's right there with my uh, with my knife. Just a few more things. I've got two different uh, sections of uh, or yeah two different sections of paracord. And I've got them in two different pockets here in the back of the uh, inside of the bag. I just I yeah I had two sections. They fit in nicely. Rather than getting a big spool, I've just got them in these two different uh, two different sizes. So. I think I got 50 feet here and another 25 feet there and paracord, tons of uses in the outdoors. And let's see, I think there's one more thing in here. What do we got down here? Oh yeah, I think this is the last item as I'm checking, yep. One of the uh, Through Night TI series flashlights. And the reason I have this is uh, if I'm out there and say I'm you know doing stuff in the woods from say noon to five or six and it starts to get dark and as I'm heading out, it's getting harder to see. And I at least have a little light so I can uh, you know, when I get out, I can be shining this around. I don't need a, a headlamp would be good as well. You know, I've got a Princeton Tech, um, one of the Bites, B-Y-T-E, I think it is. Uh, but this I had available, and it's a great little light. puts out a lot of light for a, uh, for a tiny little flashlight. So that's why I've got this one included in, uh, in this uh, bushcraft bag. And that, I'm pretty sure is it. Let me just double check these pockets. That's it for what's in my bushcraft bag. Here are all the items laid out for you. And, um... As you can see, there's not a ton of items. The idea, again, is that it's not going to be a ton of stuff to do an overnight or an extended stay. It's just to get out and work on some skills. For me, it, it tends to be like, you know, say a 9 to 1 thing or maybe like a midday to an evening thing. So this is what I bring, and uh, I've got some, some items I can, you know, use directly to work on the skills. Then I have some items to kind of make the experience a little bit easier. Like I said, you know, aqua pure or water purification tabs, so I don't have to worry about boiling water all the time. I can just have those... Um, those uh, tabs there instead. So what about you? When you go out to the woods to work on skills, what are the different items that you bring? Let's see here in the comments down below and uh, we'll get the discussion started. So as always, thanks for checking out the videos here on Everyday Tactical Vids. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you've not done so already. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Check us out on Instagram and Tumblr as well. Take care.